In this video, we're going to continue discussing power series and the connection that power series have to um, approximating functions with polynomials. So we've said that power series that have, again, this form of the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of ck x minus a to the k can be used to represent functions and that the first n terms of a power series represent an nth degree polynomial. So the question that we want to answer um, and the next part that we're going to be going over is what should be the form of those coefficients ck um, for a polynomial so that we will actually get a good and useful approximation of a given function. So we're going to um, go through thinking about this idea with a particular example, and then we'll get to our general formula for what those ck's um, should be. So let's look at these ideas in the context of the following example. I've got the function e to the x. The idea of doing a, um, a polynomial approximation is really generalizing the idea of a linear approximation. So let's start with um, the linear approximation for this function. Let's say I want to find the linear approximation or the um, equation of the tangent line to e to the x at x equals 0. So we're finding um, an equation in the following form where I'm going to have this first order linear polynomial equals c naught plus c1 x of my tangent line. So we know how to do that. I know I'm going to have my, my function here. i got to take its derivative. I'm going to need to find the value of my function at my, at my point, which is 1, and the value of the um, derivative at the point here. Okay, so I get 1 and 1. So I see that my line here, I'm going to have y minus um, my y1 y minus 1 equals my slope times x minus 0. So I get y equals x plus 1. So writing it in the form um, that we have here, I have my p1 of x is equal to 1 plus x. So I see that my um, c0 was equal to 1 here, and c1 was equal to 1. So notice that the c0, that value of 1, um, was based on the y value of my function, and c1 here was based on the derivative. Okay, And um, the reason that we... Uh, created our line in this way. This was our formula for the equation of the tangent line that we had learned back in Calc 1. As we were, we found a, a line um, that had both the same y value as our given function and had the same slope. So we were trying to match the y value and we were trying to match the slope. Okay, and that's why near that um, Near our point, near that x equals 0 along that line, we have a decent approximation to our curve if we're very close to that point. So we have our exponential curve looking something like this. Um, near the point um, x equals 0, I have my line doing something like this. Okay, There's my p1 of x equals 1 plus x. Okay, So we'll just also note here that this has the property um, that, let's see, my p1 of 0 is equal to f of 0, and my p1 prime of 0 is equal to f prime of 0. So same y values and same derivative information at 0. So now let's see if we can improve um, our approximation. To obtain better approximations of our function, instead of having just um, our approximation match the given um, function in terms of the y value and the slope, we could also find an approximation that bends in the same sort of direction to make it more closely fit that graph near zero. So to do this, we're going to add a quadratic term. So we're going to have this second order polynomial here that'll have the form c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared um, for some real number c2, because we've already found here that our c0 will be 1, and c1 would also be equal to 1. So we're trying to find c2 to make our graph of this quadratic approximation um, fit our graph near 0. Okay, so before, we had wanted a match in those y values and a match in the derivatives. Now we're going to add a match in the second derivative, so that the second derivative of this quadratic approximation at 0 will be equal to our second derivative at 0 for our function y equals e to the x. Okay, so let's see what we need to do here. Notice that if I evaluate p2 of x, as it's stated here, at 0, I will have p2 of 0 equals c0, and I know I want to use c0 is equal to 1, okay? Um, and I also see that, of 
course, for my function, I have f of x equals e to the x. That is equal to um, what f of 0 is. Okay, so I do, I will have, if I use that c naught, p2 of 0 equals f of 0. So what about the first derivative? So notice that our first derivative of our p2 of x would be um, p2 prime of x is equal to c1 plus 2c2x. So when I plug in 0, I'll have p2 prime of 0 is equal to c1, and we're using 1 for our c1, and we know that is equal to um, our first derivative of our function at 0, so that also agrees. And again, I know my first derivative here is e to the x. Um, so now what about doing our second derivative, so we can try to figure out what c2 is going to need to be equal to. Well, our second derivative here would be equal to 2c2. So I want that the second derivative um, of this at 0, which would be equal to 2c2, I want that to be equal to my second derivative of my function at 0. Well, I notice that my second derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Um, the second derivative at 0 would be e um, e to the 0. So let's see, I want c2 to be the second derivative at 0 divided by 2, or in this case, equal to 1 half. So I would have that my second order um, polynomial here, the quadratic approximation, would be p2 of x is equal to 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared. So we're using this form of c naught plus c1x plus c2x squared, where we already found c naught and c1 as 1, and then we're able to find our c2 needs to be 1 half. Okay, so we know that's going to give an even better approximation. So why is this um, doing a better approximation and putting an appropriate bend? Well, it's going to have the same concavity. at x equals 0. So by adding that second derivative information, we were able to match the concavities of our approximation polynomial and the original function. So we know that we could keep adding more and more terms to get a better and better approximation. So let's look at um, how we can sort of generalize this to getting some formulas for these coefficients in terms of our function f. So what have we found so far? Well, we've found so far that our c naught was based on um, f of 0, that c1 was equal to the first derivative at 0, and that c2 was equal to the second derivative at 0 divided by 2. Okay, so now let's look at a question about getting a match for um, some information that's based on the third derivatives. We want the third derivatives at 0 to be equal. So notice that my first derivative of this third order polynomial would be equal to c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared, okay? The second derivative would be equal to 2c2 plus 3 times 2c3x. And for the third derivative, we'll have the following here. I've got just 3 times 2c3 or 6c3, okay? So I know that I want the um, third derivative at 0 to be equal to the third derivative of my function at 0. So I want to have my 6c3 equal to the third derivative of the function here at 0. So I'm going to have c3 is equal to this third derivative at 0 all over um, 6. Okay, so let's just look at see what happens up to the, the fourth degree here. Um, so we can just see the pattern a little bit more and convince ourselves of what this formula is going to look like. So notice and if I wanted to find c4 for a fourth degree, I would start out with p4 of x is c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c3x cubed plus c4x to the fourth, and I'd have to get down to the, the fourth derivative. Um, so I'd have my first derivative here would be c1 plus 2c2x plus c, let's see, 3c3x squared plus 4c4x cubed. We went to the second derivative, we'd have 2c2 here, plus 3 times 2c3x, plus 4 times 3c4x squared, and then down to the third derivative, 3 times 2c3, plus 4 times 3 times 2c4x. Um, okay, and if I went down to the, the fourth derivative, We've got this 4 times 3 times 2, 
C4. Okay, so we're seeing that if that um, P, the let's see, the fourth derivative of the P4 of X would have to be equal to um, the fourth derivative at zero. I would have this four times three times two C4 equals the fourth derivative at zero. So I'd have this C4 equals the fourth derivative um, at zero divided by this four times three times two. So notice that what I had up here for C3 I could actually have thought of as divided by three times two. Now I have something divided by four times three times two. So we should be fairly convinced here that we've got some factorials involved. So I have my third derivative at zero over three factorial would have been my C3 and C4 here would have had this fourth derivative at zero divided by four factorial. So now we're ready to state our definition for Taylor polynomials. So we say that the nth order Taylor polynomial for a function f centered at a is given by pn of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over two factorial plus f triple prime of a x minus a cubed over three factorial, et cetera, all the way up to the nth term, which has the form the nth derivative at a times x minus a to the n, all over n factorial. So our, our CKs, or our CNs as they're described here, um, is equal to this nth derivative at a over n factorial, which is exactly what we were finding in our example. So remember this um, form of the, the polynomial has the property that it matches the function f in value, in slope, and in all derivatives up to the nth derivative at a. So it's that matching all that information that makes it a really good approximation to the, um, the given function. Okay, so in other words, we could write this as Pn of x equals the sum from k equals zero up to n of ck x minus a to the k, where the ck's are equal to the kth derivative at a over k factorial um, for k equals zero, one, two, three, etc., all the way up to n. So continue looking at the videos to see some examples um, of using this definition to find um, some Taylor polynomials.